well as the cash flow um, implications, also a move towards being able to separate out large bits of your business that is a standalone subsidiary. So I've said that the way the CRC works is to treat an organisation as a whole. What governments understood from consultation responses is that actually for some businesses they've got some really big subsidiaries that actually would constitute CRC organisations in their own right. And if you've got one of those, you can opt to actually allow that significant group undertaking, that part of your business, that subsidiary that would have been able to participate in the CRC in its own right, that can now operate on its own rather than having to be aggregated up with the main parent company. And that, that's, that's down to the fact that some people are finding it quite difficult to be able to get the, sort of the internal communication in place to be able to operate as one single entity where those bits of the business are really quite big. Something else that's changed a bit is I mentioned that when government ranks who comes around the league table, one of the things they take into account is how much you've done in advance of the scheme starting, how much early action you've undertaken. And one of the proxies they're using for that is whether or not you've got the carbon trust standard. What government's now said is the carbon trust standard still counts, that's still a good way to get points. If you can also find another eligible scheme or another equivalent scheme to the carbon trust standard, that would also count. So I haven't been able to think yet of what an equivalent scheme is, but obviously if anyone's got any ideas here today, we'd be happy to discuss whether they might be equivalent. From a renewables point of view, I mentioned right at the start, didn't I, that the name change almost recognises the fact that this isn't meant to be the key incentive for renewables. So as a result, when you report how much energy you use from renewables, if that energy um, claims a rock or is under a feed-in tariff, you'd have to claim it as being standard brown energy. And so it wouldn't be demonstrated as a reduction in your carbon footprint. But what government has said is that they will now publish alongside the league table the amount of renewable energy that organisations use, so that you've got somewhere at least of enhancing your reputation by saying to organisations in the outside world, well, we use this much electricity, we do buy this much on a renewable tariff or from some kind of renewable generation. The public sector definitions have changed a bit. Um, and now it will be the Freedom of Information Act definitions that are used and if anybody's got questions on those we can try and answer them in the Q&A. I think the last thing we get asked about a lot is, well when are we going to hear from government? When's the next um, mail out coming? And many of you will have received to your different billing addresses qualification packs to each half hourly meter. There's a couple of things to note I think there. One is that the Environment Agency asked organisations and said if, if you know you've got, you're responsible for a whole range of different half alley meters, if you tell us which those are, we can then just send you a single information, um, sort of not information request, but also almost we, the correspondence can all just come to one central place. And the main thing to note on that is it's not too late. So if you didn't get around to doing that the first time, you know you've got a whole load of half alley meters and you're getting lots of different correspondence to lots of different sites, you can go to the environment agency and say, actually, we want that all to come to one place. And that can be quite a good way of saving time and reducing confusion within the organisation. The other thing is that guidance is expected later this month in terms of how the very start of the scheme will actually work. So in terms of registration um, and also what the information disclosure will require. And the Environment Agency says at the moment they hope to get that out at the end of October. There is actually already some guidance on the Environment Agency website which relates to automatic meter reading, AMR, the early action metric as well. And so there's a bit of extra guidance that's also been published there. So those are some of the main things that have changed in the October announcement. It's not everything that's changed, and it's definitely worth having a look at the document if you get the chance.